Coming to you from Rochester, New York, home of the Lilac Festival, Strong Museum of Play, and the National Tech Institute for the Deaf. Your one-stop shop for everything nerdy and geeky, here's FC3 Monkey Business, starring your hosts, Tiny Metris, Chris Frank, and Billy Diator. Coming at you in the latest 4D technology, here's your host, Chris Frank. Hi, honey, I'm home. You were gone? Oh, there, there are so many ways to answer that question. <laughs> There are days. There are days. Billy, Billy. Hi, Chris. How you feeling? Um, still here. Still here. Still a little bit better than you were last week. Oh, of course. Yeah, because you know, being with you guys makes me better. Aw, uh, see, it's nice to have a or positive experience in somebody's life. Yay. You're, or, or you just, you know, get a little crazier, so you don't notice it as much. I suppose. Yeah. I like being with people like me. I'm telling you, that's it. Makes this whole thing 125 episodes strong now. Woohoo! 125. Wow. I can't, you know, I know I lost track. I was like, oh my God. When I was doing the um, the numbers crunching the other day, and I was like, 125. That's that's impressive. It is. Over, what, two and a half, three years now almost? Yeah. We've been doing this? We've done more episodes than uh, the original Star Trek. Yes. And maybe Batman combined. Uh, wow. That is no, saying not something. not quite. No, I don't think so. We have, we'll never touch we'll Supernatural. Close. It's going to take us a long time to catch up with Supernatural, I think, at this point. How uh, many episodes of that are there? They're, they're in the 300s at Oof, this point. Wow. Yeah, we're going to need a couple more years to catch up to Supernatural, I think. Um, also, like MASH and uh, Cheers, I think. Simpsons. Simpsons. We're definitely not going to be catching up to General Hospital. Oh, yeah, the soap operas. The soap opera. That's crazy. <laughs> Five episodes a week for. Well, the Guiding Light's been on. Well, no, that hasn't been on in years now. But that was yeah. started in radio. Yeah, that one was three. like fifty years old. I think that yeah. one. Was. So, but our humble little one twenty-five, and we would like to thank everybody for being along on this journey with us. Uh, so, Billy, you're good. Tanya, how you doing over there? I'm good. She's good. She's playing on her phone right now. I'm looking on Facebook. What are you looking on Facebook for? Oh, I just was. Perusing things, I, I saw that the um, women's mm-hmm. soccer team won because uh, this is July seventh that we're recording, right? But we're dropping. Yeah. But then um, I I saw something that kind of like pissed me off. Oh. I, I understand it says Disney denies permission for family to have Spider Man tombstone after the four year old dies from rare disease. Um, he had uh, the family took a trip to Disney so he could meet his favorite superhero. He was four mm-hmm. Spider Man. Blah blah blah. Um, after he passed away, the family asked for Disney if, to do a Spider-Man tombstone. Their request was denied. And I can understand why their request was denied. It said... Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, it says, we follow a policy that began with Walt Disney himself that does not permit the use of characters on headstones, cemetery, or other memorial markers or funeral urns, the rep said. Mm-hmm. Um, although we cannot grant the family's request, we would be ple- pleased to commemorate your nephew with a hand-inked, hand-painted, personalized action frame from the movie that recognizes his love from Spider-Man, which will read for your blah, 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 okay. nephew's name for that. All right. So something about what you said is conflicting in my head here. It, it upset you, but, but you understood. Uh, but, right, because I only caught the headline, which okay. pissed me off. Gotcha. And so, so you got to look deeper is what you're saying. You have to look deeper into oh, it. But, doesn't that fit into today's conversation? So and, and it, so, so when you like first read something mm-hmm. and then you post it, you don't necessarily read through the whole thing. I'm like, I can understand that whatever that the family wanted this and they got denied. I can understand the family's frustration and they're pissed off, whatever. Mm-hmm. But coming from the business perspective, I know that we have to ask permission from any of the conglomerates to use anything that's licensed. Right. Especially, I mean, when we wanted to do our um, uh, program covers, Mm -hmm. we didn't want to have Superman or Spider-Man or Iron Man or whatever or likeness on there because we know that. It's not owned by us. Right. We don't have the license for it. So in order, or we to have to work with artists who do have licenses. License to, for right. Yeah. So that I can understand. So um, when I saw the person post it, which is a mutual friend of both of ours, it says, mm-hmm. um, "Disney can kiss every square inch of his ass." I hope they have a lot of time, because he, Jason Carr, was oh. pissed off in regards to this. But I can understand people's frustration with this, but you mm-hmm. also have to understand the business the, the business policy mm-hmm. in regards to I, I, and the I, fact I, that they weren't they didn't just say no and ignored it. They, they said, said no, we can't do, do that. But here's something we this can is the do. Policy. Yeah, and but here's something. But also more to the point, more importantly, they're this like, here's something we can do, do and this is what you. we offer. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not just no done. Right. 
Billy, what you, you were going to say? I, I'm just curious. Do you think it's a normal policy for people in this situation where it's a death for them to reach out and ask, which I, I find unusual? I, I think that mm-hmm. like my family would just put Batman on or something yeah. without asking and no one it's else would like, ever know. It's not like Disney has a graveyard police. Yeah, exactly. But here's the thing is you got to wonder in today's society, somebody would have oh. would have taken a picture of it and it would have hit social media. And then somebody from Disney would have caught wind of that because somebody would have tagged them and you know would have well, snowballed. Let's, uh, in regards, it says once so and so passed away, the mm-hmm. person went to the city council to ask permission to create a design of Spider-Man on his son's tombstone. He was told he would need to ask the massive Disney conglomerate for permission. Mm-hmm. So even city council said because it's a likeness yeah. of uh, of a likeness so every, character. Everybody had a little. The unfortunate thing is that the family did not get what they want, and I understand that. But it was all, from what I'm hearing in this story so far, everything was handled perfectly, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of business and professionalism. You know, everybody's like, okay, well, let's be sure. Let's not just go ahead and say, go ahead and do it and see what happens. Could you imagine, though, if they'd gotten all the way and they made the headstone and everything was all squared away? And then away, they had to take it down. And then they had to take it down? What a big stink that would have been? It said Disney denied the request, citing they want to preserve the innocence and magic of the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, it says Disney also stated in the response that they wanted to disassociate the characters with death. Which the guy's like, uh, that makes no sense to me. Characters died in their films all the time. I think this was about the money. That was his thought. Mm -hmm. The decision was undoubtedly another blow during such a sensitive time. But then Disney representative, as I said, they follow a policy that they do not permit the use of characters Mm -hmm. on. The last line of the statement surely added insult to injury. (laughs) This was the the one that kind of like sends people into different directions. Thank you for letting us share in the magic of your life, your friends at the Walt Disney Company. Oh, the the pet response. Yes. Yeah, the automated response. So yeah, I can understand how that would be a little upsetting. Yeah, that's a thing. So yeah, so I'm like, no, I get kinda... it. I get it. Well. So then so I. So that's the show, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it talks, talks about just like, um, just the nerd culture in general, how mm-hmm. we want to. Get it in all aspects of our life. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. We'll we'll talk about that more in a little bit. Mm -hmm. How are you? I'm doing fine. I have a dog that doesn't know how to not piddle in the living room still, but I'm working on it. She's five months old. She's working on it. I know. Cats are smarter. Cats are smarter. Not necessarily. I had two cats that would poop all over the place because they were getting old and well, things like that's that. that's age. Yeah, yeah so. You'll have a couple old adults who'll do that eventually. <laughs> My favorite cat gif of all times uh, was this one that was on the, the side, it looked like it was on the side of a bed, this big fat sucker, and and he starts to slip over the side and he's scrambling, but everything is shifting, so he's okay. going over. Yeah, he's, a he's going over, and there's this moment in time, it just, just before he disappears from view, that everything just... He stops. He meant to do and that. And the look in his eye is just like, ah, shit, I know where this is. You know, just He just gives in the resignation of this is going to happen, and over he disappears. And I just... It's... Chances are he landed on his feet. <laughs> and then all of a sudden a caption pops up goes, I question my life choices. <laughs> and I lost it. I was laughing so hard at that one. Uh, but, you know, Juno, I got to tell you, I didn't talk about it last week. Um, but Juno did great on 4th of July. You know, people usually try to be very conscious of their dogs. And my area, my neighborhood of the city, it, it sounds like a friggin' war zone yeah. for days, days before and days after. Oh, we lived in the same neighborhood. for. We're still not that far apart, but I uh-huh. was only a couple blocks from you for a long time. Mm-hmm. And- know exactly what it's like over there oh yeah it's it's amazing every year and it's getting worse yeah. and worse and worse and sometimes you don't know if it's fireworks or real gunfire oh god i know that 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 i'm fairly confident that it isn't in my current neighborhood in my previous neighborhood wasn't so sure yeah. <laughs> but um most of the folks just they just it was going off all night long and and juno hung in there wonderfully she was a brave little sucker uh, we actually went out for our last walk of the evening. It was about 1130 at night, and it was very hot, very humid evening. There was a bit of a fog, and then the so the smoke from all of the firecrackers and fireworks being uh, fired off was hanging in the humidity mm-hmm. and the, hanging in the fog, so it made it even more, it was almost like you were walking eerie. through a... Oh, it was very eerie. <laughs> it was like you were walking through a Hollywood horror movie or something like that. You were waiting for Jason or Freddy oh, or uh, it was Michael bad. Myers you know, but to you come hear people, out. You hear people chatting. The, you know, Fourth of July parties were going on and whatnot, and it was very cool. Uh, but at one point, 
did it was dead silent and then all of a sudden a mortar cannon goes off right over our heads boom big red sparklers and everything and it startled the crap out of me my dog kept walking <laughs> i'm like really my five-month-old puppy was you know just handled it she just didn't she didn't even blink well, she was great at our house too yeah she was doing good She's so, good. She's a good dog. Yeah, she was. So, so um, you came over about mm. six, six thirty, or mm-hmm. whatever, on the Fourth of July. Ran and, her out. Yes, because we've got eight tenths of an acre, and mm-hmm. you, you have a postage stamp size yeah, yard. So, yeah, it allowed her to uh, run and chase a tennis ball. And Riker was letting off little. But he, well, the things that Riker was firing off were not very loud. No, but it was just something to They're get her used to the little mm-hmm. pop and pop, yeah, pop she of the could. sound. She was looking at. She was. Would look around and things like that. She, I noticed that she's definitely still skittish around all the men. Mm-hmm. But yet, she went to Yvonne. She went to my next door neighbor, Madeline, and Madeline's mm-hmm. friend. She came right to me. She stood right next to me. Yeah. But you, you and Juliana are battling for a top spot in terms of who's who's her honorary mom. <laughs> really, it's basically it. So yeah, all the women who come over, she loves the women. She's not mm-hmm. too sure about guys, except for me now. Yeah, but no, she was no, good. There's no and personal space in my life anymore. You, you had her off her lead, mm-hmm. and she stayed either right on the patio or right in the grass next to you. So mm-hmm. She responds well, like yes. when she wanted to chase Riker to the front of the house, but I got her not to. That was, mm-hmm. that was cool. But she did, she did follow me, and you allowed her to go with me, knowing mm-hmm. full well that she's going to have to listen to somebody, but Riker, not, not so much. Yeah, no, Riker's not a role model. Yes. <laughs> yes. He's doing, he's doing better. Yeah. So. All right. So here we are. Did you see any movies recently? What's that? I saw Spider Man. Not since Spider Man. Saw Spider Man. I still haven't caught up in the movies yet. I want to see Hobbs and Shaw. As I know, last week we talked about the the movie franchise fatigues. Yeah. Talk about franchise fatigue. Hobbs and Shaw was it? Is that Fast and Furious Ten at this point? No, it's a it's a, it's spin-off. a spin-off. It's a but spin-off, still, but it's Hobbs it's from the and same, Shaw. Like, but I haven't seen any of the franchise. Fast stuff. and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Yes, yeah. I haven't seen any of the Fast and Furious movies. So, so one, why do you want to see this one? This one looks. It, it, She's got a crush on the Rock. No, it's yes, not you even do. that. Yeah, you do. <laughs> one, I want my popcorn at the movies, and the only way I get it is if I go, go to, to a movies. movie with Sean. And Sean's like, "Come on, let's go see this movie." And I'm like, "Not a chance." He goes, "We're gonna go see Child's Play." I'm like, "No." So there are some ones that I will draw the line at. All right, fair enough. Have us something to drink, Billy. I'm trying. Yeah. 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 I'm living. I know. I can tell yeah. you that cough is gonna linger for a little while. I'm yeah. Sorry to tell you. Oh, I, I plan on it. To keep, keep fluid <laughs> At least near a you. year. At least, at least it gives them something to look forward to every morning. Yeah. Maybe it'll be gone. There you go. There we go. All right, friends. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll mm-hmm. talk a couple about things that are coming up. And then we have our big conversation of the day. We're going to talk a little bit about something that we've hinted at on several occasions. Some, some An issue that we have with nerd culture. So anyway, let's pop into a break and we'll be right back. Okay. As long as we were talking about fireworks, let's go comedian David Towell. I'm glad to be here. I travel a lot. I hate traveling. I guess because my dad used to beat me with a globe. Now, my dad was a tough man. He never let me have anything fun like fireworks. Who didn't love fireworks? Come on. Raise your hook hands so we can see you. Let's get it out. You know what we had? You know what we had? Sparklers. Sparklers. That's all we had. Sparklers are the gay cousin of the firework family. I think a flashlight is more dangerous than a sparkler. My friend's got M80s, bottle rockets, sticks of dynamite. They're blowing stuff up, having fun. I'm walking around like the special Olympic torch boy. I'm like, hey, uh, hey everybody, how's it going? Planes are landing on me, I tell you. <laughs> July 27th at the Grease Ridge Center Mall. Minicon number four coming at you like a spider monkey from 10 until 6. It's a one-day con this year, but from 12 to 4, we'll have professional wrestler Dalton Castle signing autographs and taking pictures that evening from six till eight cosplay karaoke at the 585 rock and burger bar that will be going on and make sure you register with us if you want to sing register with us on our website www.fc3roc.com let us know what you want to sing show up in costume if you want to we'll put you on the stage and we'll let you have at it and then right after the cosplay karaoke event is done we've got Wicked coming out of Utica playing 70s and 80s great freaking music and we will be oh, partnering all the way to midnight so you can spend the entire day with the Mighty Monkey. Also at the 5A Fry Rock and Burger Bar that evening on the 27th we're going to have raffles, we're going to have giveaways, we're going to have a dessert table and we're going to have 
Well, oh, yeah, I forgot us. about that from last week. Yep. The dessert uh, we have our Game of Thrones script signed by Rose Leslie. It's going to be up for raffling. Uh, we have a couple of other things in mind for you that you'll be hearing about, but definitely this is going to be not your ordinary, average, everyday raffle. Did and we say that there was a $5 cover? $5 cover. That is a thing, and uh, and that will get you into the door. All right, so Tuesday nights, game nights at the 585 Rockin' Burger Bar. Come join us for board games, for dice games, for family games. We're going to have a theme pretty much every other week. Let us know. Keep us posted. And we, if you're interested or if you have something you want to suggest for that game, uh, game night series. But Tuesdays, 585 Rockin' Burger Bar with your favorite friends from Mighty Monkey Corporation. Uh, I don't think we've got anything else coming up at the moment, do we, right now? I don't think we have anything else on the horizon. Vacation. Oh, God, vacation's coming up soon. Yes, uh, early August. Early we're going to be taking a couple-week couple week break. Yeah, so we're going to have another couple weeks in July. We'll have a couple more episodes throughout July, uh, but then in August for a couple, the first part, we're going to have our midsummer break hiatus mm-hmm. coming up, and then the uh, the Monkey Business crew will be back at it in mid-August right away. So that's cool. Another quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to be talking about the toxicity in nerd culture, gatekeeping, and... Uh, opinions and bashing people for trying to be creative and, and just how out of hand it's all gotten. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. comic book nerd, but very good looking. And that is a great combination, right? Low self-esteem, but attractive. Get him! Um, <laughs> I say my, uh, my husband is a big nerd, uh, yet I-, I had no idea to what extent. So this is what happened. I walked into the room and he slammed down his laptop, right? Slammed down and then went like this, hi! <laughs> is there anything more guilty than that? I was like, what are you looking at? He was like, nothing, nothing, vacation options. (laughs) The next day when he is not there, but his laptop is there, I open it up and I've got my finger on the touchpad because I am going to find out what porn this guy is looking at. (laughs) But I I froze, I froze because I was like, do I really want to know this? I know, and I know for sure he's not looking at pictures of girls that look like me, right? (laughs) Like he's not buying Jewy brunettes. With upper thigh issues. (laughs) Who can stop himself from an answer that is one click away? No one. So I brought up the last website he had viewed and I started reading it because it was a website called MuggleCast. (laughs) That is a website for Harry Potter enthusiasts. (laughs) That is what that is. That is so scary. I was like, my problem isn't other women, it's other wizards. Like, what the f do I do with that? (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Nerds. Nerds. We are an interesting lot. I've always thought so. I mean, mm. I, I can't I can't say that I have ever in my life not been a nerd. I think from the beginning I was watching, you know, the reruns of Star Trek and I was I remember watching the original Star Wars in the theater when I was very, very small. And so I've grown up with this culture. And and here's just here's my initial opinion and then we're gonna jump into the first part of the topic. You know, the, the point that I wanna make that's gotten me into this conversation today is being a nerd was not cool, all right? Being a nerd was... You got picked on. You got picked on. You got, you got shoved bullied. in the lockers. You got, you got bullied because of it. Uh, you know, you, you, if, when you started playing D&D, you had to do it in your basement and talk about it quietly with other friends because you didn't want other people to know you were doing it. Uh, when you were happy that Star Trek II was, was being made, you know, you didn't talk about it all that enthusiastically. When, when Return of the Jedi came out, you know, and you were reading the novelization of it. <laughs> you know, you, know, you kind of kept that to yourself because people are going, like, oh, nerd. So, you know, you grow up in that culture and you, you grow up in that whole, I have to kind of not hide it or I have to hide it. I can't be out and, uh, out and about with it. Um, you know, and, and so you learn to appreciate, to respect other people who've gone through it. Uh, and now being a nerd is mainstream. It's it's we have made the full pendulum swing to the other direction now. It's cool to be a nerd. All right. And you you can be loud and proud about it 
being a nerd, being a geek, having a great time, enjoying your fandoms, enjoying your anime, enjoying your sci-fi, enjoying your gaming, all that stuff. It's all out there. Um, so I, I guess in my, in my limited thinking, in my old age thinking, in my, in my sh shallow and, uh, you know, age demented frazzled brain i guess i just i would wonder why people who are used to being ostracized would suddenly start ostracizing ostracizing others you know gatekeeping is a big thing we've talked about gatekeeping in the past where oh you oh, well if you have not watched every episode and read every book and read every comic book not. and every then you're not a real fan I actually had a guy tell me that, well, you, you know, obviously you haven't covered enough Doctor Who. You don't know Doctor Who well enough, so you really can't be the true expert fan. This is a guy told, he, this is a guy told me this at the last convention. Oh. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> well, and what led him to that opinion? Well, because in, during the, the Doctor Who panel, I deferred to uh, other people because they were a little bit more into the trivia and, and some of the recent trivia uh, than I was. You know, and there were some episodes of the old series that I had actually had only, you know, kind of skirted past and knew a little bit about. But I've read some of the novelizations. I've, I've met some of the actors. I know some of the, I've been watching this show for 40 years. I, I know my fair share of it and I enjoy it nonetheless are all the same. And, you know, so to be kind of like judged by somebody else that really kind of caught my, my attention. Uh, but then there's also some severe other examples you know, I'm on several uh, Dungeons and Dragons boards on uh, Facebook because I like to see other people's stories and their experiences and whatnot. And sometimes I steal ideas for my own table. Um, but to have somebody say, hey, I'm new to the game. Um, I, I was trying this, this and this. I wanted to hear what the hive mind had to say. And a lot of people are very constructive. Hey, this is a great idea. Hey, welcome to the you know, welcome to the party, pal. You know, try this, try this, re read this book, read this book. You're going to like this. And but then it's only like, oh, you're doing it wrong. You know, there's a couple of guys who are like, no, that's a stupid idea. You don't want to do that. You know, that's that's a dumbass. I, oh, that's the same thing everybody else has done. Stop that. So it's like, wait, what? You know, the guy is just trying to, to learn and enjoy it, and you're going to shaft him for it? But, you know, so this this happens. This culture is out there. Um, you hinted at it last week when we were talking about DC people were, like, ravaging Captain Marvel, you know, on Rotten Tomatoes because they wanted it to look bad. You know, and and there's others that have done the same. You know, it's DC folks fans are not the only ones who have done it, but you know, see that that and it surprises me. And that in my growing up, uh -huh. you know, I've always been more of a DC comic reader than Marvel, but I enjoy both. Yeah, you know, and most of the people and same. Yeah, exactly. So when it turned out that somewhere there's people that care, mm -hmm. and like that much, yeah. Or Star Wars versus Star Trek. Or... Oh, that age-old debate. I'm so tired of that one, by the way, because it just Just enjoy nasty. stuff. It, yeah. My, and I think I've used this line before. My brother always says, blowing out someone else's candle doesn't make yours burn brighter. I've heard you say that before, and it really, you know. I've also seen another one where it's, is uh, disliking something popular doesn't make you interesting. That's good, too. You know? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say this, because this is going to be just as important. Um, you can disagree. Yeah. Listeners can disagree, and you can you can dislike something, and I'm 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 okay with it if if you if you listeners experience something and you're like, oh, I didn't like that. I like a good conversation. I like a great conversation, but yes, absolutely. And and not everything is going to be everybody's cup of tea. Not a lot of people play Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people think Star Wars is all that great. Not a lot of people think that uh that the reboot Star Trek movies were all that great because they're not. Well, you know, we, we can go back and forth on that. But Remember, just check your brain at the door. Yeah, well, the, the point is, is you're, you're allowed to disagree with us. You're allowed to not like things that don't appeal to and you. And I'd rather have a good conversation yes. about why you feel that way. Yeah. Rather than it just turning into a big... Yeah, it sucks. Of, and, and you suck. What, what bothers me is when people take their negative reaction to something and start shoving it in other people's faces. You have to not like it too. Is essentially what a lot of these people are now saying. You know, this is suck. This is ruined this whole this is ruined my childhood. This is ruined this. Ruin your childhood, please. Are you that insecure? That no. you have to go back and say that it ruined your childhood. Yeah, this stuff from my childhood still exists. Yeah. I thought that the the current Star Wars movies, episodes um episode 7 and 8, Force Awakens and Last Jedi. Okay. They were not 
bowl me over amazing movies, but I enjoyed them. Mm-hmm. I yeah. thought they were great Star Wars movies. I thought that the formula and the vibe and the feel were very similar to the Just original from, trilogy. Right. Okay, but here they've become so polarizing. You have people out there who are, they've ruined this, they've ruined that, this sucks, these people are awful. You know, And then there's, uh, you know, there's people who have actually threatened Daisy Ridley. I was going to say that. There's people bullying <clears throat> the actors. What the hell yeah. is that all Kelly about? Tran. Yeah. Kelly yeah. Tran. What did these people do that, that they earned this? If you didn't like it, you didn't like it. But seriously, you're going to reach out to mm-hmm. these people and crush them for it? Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me, people? That's driving yeah. me insane. Well, the, the biggest one from the last few years is when... <laughs> Lady Ghostbusters came out, or yeah. Ghostbusters mm-hmm. is what it called, and you know, yeah. Melissa McCarthy, uh, Kate McKinnon, mm-hmm. and the rest, and the nerd outrage oh, that happened for that movie existing. Mm-hmm. Just and it for was existing. A, it was a cute movie. I enjoyed I, it. I thought it was funny. It, it was I funny. I haven't seen it yet. But, you know, and if you didn't like it, that's fine, too. Yeah. But to go to the extremes, there, there was a podcast I used to listen to. I really enjoyed it. A comedian by the name of Mike Lawrence, mm-hmm. who's a, he's a big nerd, and, mm-hmm. and did a podcast called Nerd of Mouth. Okay. And they basically did what we do. They talk, him and his buddies talked about comics or video games or, mm-hmm. or whatever. And the outrage around that Lady Ghostbusters movie made him so ashamed of being a nerd mm-hmm. that they stopped doing the podcast. Wow. After really? like a I I'll check to see how many episodes it was mm-hmm. because I I did look it up earlier in their mouth podcast. But they did a couple hundred I bet. Okay. And that He was just so upset reaction, with the reaction. He was so upset about the reaction. Let's uh-huh. see the last episode. Let's see if it was numbered. Uh I, I can't tell how many there were, but I mean there was easily over a hundred because mm-hmm. I used to listen every week. There's always going to be somebody who's not going to see the item in question for what it is, uh, just an expression of a particular mm-hmm. story, and that's fine. I, like I said, I don't want to take away people's reactions. I don't want to say it's wrong to disagree with us. I don't want to say it's wrong to not like things. Okay, or not I don't, to not like things. I don't have. Yeah, there. There's somebody who's associated with our convention. And I follow this person on Instagram and Facebook, and I've talked to them on several occasions about a variety of things. And I've just watched this person's reaction to certain things lately, and I'm like, I'm, I'm starting to get irritated mm-hmm. with this person. They, in my opinion, have become so pretentious and stuck up. And it's like, really? I'm, I, I had a conversation through online that made me feel bad for actually liking a thing that this person spent most of a conversation over the course of a couple of days bashing the crap out of. And I'm like, it took me a second. I'm like, how dare you really? You, you actually affected my enjoyment of, of the something. product mm-hmm. because you're just so bent on speaking ill of it. And, and I, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to take your opinion away from you. You're entitled to not like something. You're entitled to say, I don't agree with that. I, I don't want to say don't. You know, I don't want to, con- don't conform with me. Don't, you don't agree with me just because I'm saying you have to. I mean, that's why movie critics exist. Exactly. To give their opinions. But, but seriously, does it have to be so toxic and so vile? I, I think getting personal with it yeah. is what separates true criticism mm-hmm. from toxicity, to use your word. That, let's, let's look at the big thing. Go ahead. So Tanya. let me, let me get in, into that. There are three tenets of the word nerd. Mm-hmm. Tenant one, a nerd must not harm another nerd or through inaction <laughs> allow a nerd to come to harm. This is the, the, the three laws of robotics from Asimov? Yes. That's been adapted? Number two, nerds must cooperate with <laughs> other nerds except where such cooperation would violate the previous tenant. <laughs> and three, nerds must protect the existence of nerdum except where such protection violates the first two tenants. Mm-hmm. And so, the fourth one, David Tennant. There you go. <laughs> Uh, he's a tenet of, no, he's a tenet of nerddom <laughs> but it, it's like everyone's going to have their own opinions right. and their thoughts on whatever makes them nerdy mm-hmm. like talk nerdy to me at this point Ooh, baby um but there's things that you like that i don't understand or right. whatever that we, our monty python conversations right i'm just like i'm not i'm not going to take any of it i j- i don't understand it i'm not saying that i hate it i whatever mm-hmm. i've watched some things but am i going to take away someone else's enjoyment of it because it's something that i just don't get or don't understand yeah hell no because then that makes me a bully right 
And that's what's happening in our culture. Right. The people who were traditionally bullied for decades upon decades are, are now suddenly becoming the bullies. It. Now, if it wasn't acceptable to be bullied, why are you turning it on people? No, it says um, I'm on our favorite Mr. Google uh-huh. today. And we're Hello, talking- Mr. Google. Hi. It says, when did geek culture get so angry? And I'd say it's within the past, I'd say, f- five to seven years. Uh, and there is an article. It says it, it. It's just this one was from 2008, but they were talking about. Um, oh, 2010 years, 11 years ago. Yeah, 10, 11. Uh, no, 20, 2018. Sorry. Okay. But they were talking oh, about. One year ago. Sorry. In January 2011. Jared Lee Lochner, a, a 22 at the time, attempted to assassinate U.S. Representative Gabrielle Giffords. Mm-hmm. She survived, but six people day, died that day in a supermarket parking lot. A few days later, um, uh, the um, Slate published an essay about Locker, Lochner under the headline, Angry Nerds. Oh, boy. So it says, um, it notes that they were mercilessly and constantly teased, picked on, and threatened for being different from their peers. Mm-hmm. That's what we were talking about. Shy, bookish, an honor student, artistic, musical, theatrical, non-athletic, a geek, or weird. Mm-hmm. So they're they're talking about today the face of geek culture is not only fan community sharing their enthusiasm, it's also <laughs> a comet thread troll, mm-hmm. a Twitter egg threatening rape and death, and mm-hmm. it's Lochner's crooked grin. So they're they're pulling about it's like how did we get from these sensitive new age geeks to angry young nerds? Yeah. How how did we get there? I don't know. I don't know where it where it's in in it in turned. today's day and age where we have the LGBTQ community. I, did I? Gonna, I think you got all the initials. I, did I get all the initials? Yes. I, I'm not sure. And we have trans. We have binary. We have non-binary. Mm-hmm. We have whatever. We have um, cosplaying, um, switching gender, gender swapping, and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. It, it is. This is the time to be the creative and thing, and and to embrace everything that makes us who we are. Mm-hmm. We are great. We're unique. We're awesome. I'm reading your bottle. We're amazing. We're <laughs> we're happy and yeah. we're kind. We're kind. We're active. And I'm sorry, everyone that's putting the toxicity into this. Mm-hmm. Shame on you. Seriously. Because I mean, it, I don't know. I know we brought it up last week. And I don't know if you mentioned it again this week. It's uh, like people are in outrage over the live action casting of the new Ariel Haley Bailey, right? Which is Hallie kind of the core Bailey of why I wanted to talk about it this uh, week. Of what I'm like, get over yourselves. Yeah, there was actually somebody took the time to scientifically prove that mermaids and mermen are going to be white because of light exposure at the depths of the sea. I'm like, is your racism and your need to Who be the blank cares? validated? Oh, go ahead and fly it today. No, I'm because uh, I'm about to. I'm, I, can, I feel I'm, like I feel like I, I'm close to dropping an f bomb at any given moment in time. This person, <laughs> do we have to push a button? In all seriousness, <laughs> this person turned around and said, "Well, because of this, 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 and this, all mermaids have to be white." I don't understand why they would cast a black actress. Does it matter? Maybe she's a really freaking fantastic actress. Maybe she's a great singer. Maybe you should try learning the person as right. a person. Give the child a I'm, chance, I'm for sorry. God's sake. So if you want to go there, why does Hamilton all have to be in red? <clears throat> yeah. Let, let's just throw that out there. Yeah. I'm like, if you wanted to go back to be blah, 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 and that's getting great reviews, and that's awesome and fantastic mm-hmm. and phenomenal. Now, I'm not going to go watch it because it has to do with American history, but that's my perspective. There you go. I don't like American history. Mm-hmm. But am I going to take that away from somebody else? God, no. No. That's And I think this, this when, the, like when the, the whole Halle Bailey being cast as Ariel thing came out. Oh, that was my cue to I say this is the conversation we're because we've always hinted at it because we we're we're very anti the toxicity in this in this podcast. We always have been, um, you know. And, and if there's ever a time we've contributed to it, I feel bad. I want to look back at it and I want to understand if we've done that. But because I know we've knocked things and we've we've kind of disparaged things on a couple of occasions, but I don't think we've really tried to take away other people's enjoyment of it. Even for Halloween one year, I dressed as Uhura. I'm sorry. I am really, really pale white. Yeah, you're there, you're definitely a white chick. I definitely I I go out in the sun and I get bright red and right. get burn. But I love that character. End of statement. Period. That's all you need. And that's and that's just you want to emulate that and you want to enjoy that. 
the, the whole gatekeeping in the cosplay community is insane. Oh, you're the wrong person for that character. You're the wrong person for that character. Or you don't have that weapon on or you don't, or you ha- don't yeah. have whatever, and you're bashing yeah. somebody for not having all their pieces. Stop and think and, and compliment mm-hmm. them on saying, you know, you did a great job representing that character. You must really love that character. Our cosplay ambassadors have been awesome about right. that. And you I know, know a couple of our at... cosplay ambassadors are mm-hmm. frustrated because I've seen it online yeah. where that they've been come up to at different conventions. I don't know if necessarily ours, but mm-hmm. they're saying, oh, why didn't, why, where's that weapon? Well, as they say, half the time, those prop weapons are not allowed right. into the convention right. because of A, B, and C. Or two, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. So when you're starting to think about gatekeeping or calling somebody out on whatever cosplay character or whatever stop and think yeah and give them a compliment yeah Th- that person that may be the very first effort into that that may be the very first cosplay that a person's ever done and they may not have the skills that you do because they haven't ex- they haven't had a chance to exercise them and practice them i had our cute little ariel do yes. my um, Star Trek jacket. She had never made a Star Trek jacket before. She did a great job with she it. She did it based on pictures. She yeah. did a phenomenal thing, and I loved it. And there were some things that we had to fix because, like, some of the stitching. Uh-huh. But I'm just like, can we fix this? And I go, you did an awesome job. I love it. It was and, wonderful. And I, there's a couple things that we want to change on it and mm-hmm. adapt. And But it was our first go around. I'm like, I can pin things. That's about uh, my, where my skills are. Mm-hmm. And she did an awesome job to have it for our cosplay karaoke for last March yeah. for me to be Deanna Troy. Every so, fandom is suffering from it right now. Every fandom is suffering from this toxicity. Okay, Billy's not suffering. Well, I, I think my thing is I, that type of stuff just makes me want to check out mm-hmm. of any discussion with that person right. and become even more of a loner or hang out with the people that more like me mm-hmm. you know and they're not, willing to have that discussion yeah. and not necessarily or just talk bash. about you know hey chris why do you like those star trek movies uh here's why i don't like them mm-hmm. chris and, pine <laughs> and that's that's as good an answer as any to be honest with you mm-hmm. you yeah. know that's there's Sorry. but that is a fine answer yeah that's what i like it. i chris did like the pine. dynamic between the characters mm-hmm. yeah. i did like the dynamic i did like to, i liked seeing um all of Gene Roddenberry's vision, the aesthetics and the and the the visuals of it updated to a modern sensibility yeah. because we knew from the minute that it first came out that it was disco and cheesy, right? right? And and for, all, for it still has a certain level of charm. The original series still has mm-hmm. a level of charm, True. and the stories are amazing. The stories are mm-hmm. very in depth and amazing. But to see the Enterprise the way I think Roddenberry would have liked to have seen it. No, but, but my point is is that we can have this discussion right. and not agree. Exactly. And I, I can agree with some of your points and say, that's a, I, I accept that. That's a good reason. Right. And vice I versa. Still I don't do the necessarily same for you. agree with it. Mm-hmm. But if that's your take and I respect you as a person right. and as someone who likes the same stuff I do, mm-hmm. that's good. And maybe I'll revisit it with those thoughts in my mind. Mm-hmm. And, now, um, like with... With Star Wars, there is this huge wave of of antipathy towards Daisy Ridley and the Ray character. Oh, she's a Mary Sue. She's this. She's you know what they they don't have to explain it to you. And what if that character was a male? Mm-hmm. What if that character was a male and had the same level of power and the same level of of you know lack of experience, but still managed to make good? It would suddenly become a her- heroic story. You know, I've mm-hmm. seen that argument. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that makes no sense to me. If you're going to ding her for it, but you're not going to ding a guy for it, because that's what that's Luke Skywalker for you. I, I liked Ray as a character. <clears throat> I think she's a fantastic yeah. character. Just the right amount of sass. Yep. Right. The feisty. That that desire to to try and you know leap beyond, but a lot of a lot of interior issues going on in ter- mm-hmm. inside her. You know the the questioning she her was own left. Yeah, she was left behind, questioning her own existence. Mm-hmm. So there are flaws. There are. Mm-hmm. Ups and downs to the character. I think she's. A, it's a great character. It's a lot of fun. And the fact mm-hmm. that Daisy Ridley's adorable as all hell doesn't hurt. You know. Well, why do you think people? So is BBA. Just just yeah. want to be jerks. To, to uh, because do, do they want think their fifteen seconds of fame. That's almost my point. They yeah. spent so yeah. long sort of being marginalized and is a nerd. Mm-hmm. Now that nerd culture is popular, they're mm-hmm. going to take. They're going to get their their sixty seconds of fame or whatever to. Or put their, you know just use their. 
or they like to stir nerd. the pot. Yeah. And then they sit back and watch. We know several people. As a matter of fact, one of them was at our gaming table for a long time who took pride in being an asshole. He would mm-hmm. say it. I'm an asshole. I'm happy mm-hmm. with it. I'm mm-hmm. fine with that. What? Stop talking about Sean. I'm not talking about Sean. Oh. And you know it. <laughs> Sean is like, bring it on. But yeah. he's part of that, that nerd culture, too, <laughs> yeah, type thing. But he's see, the thing about whatever. Sean, though, is, is, I is love Sean. He's, got the, he's got the crusty <laughs> exterior, but he really is a genuinely nice guy underneath. He's an easygoing guy. And when he doesn't like cook. something. <laughs> yeah, he cooks really well. But when, but, but when he doesn't like something, he, he just, it's it. He doesn't yeah. like it. That's but if and you he, like it, John, you he might be or, Bones McCoy, you know, right? The the gruff, oh. but <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He's and, very... and you know, and he makes no qualms about it. You don't have to agree with him. You don't nope. have to like it. You don't whatever. He's, he he's is going to enough. put it out here and and type yeah. this blah 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 blah, and he's going to get it out there. And you're like, oh, okay, right? And he goes and he'll say, and I'm an asshole about it, and I'm okay with that. Let, let, let me get real serious here because this is that I'm going to this is going to say something publicly for something I've thought about for a while because you, you you love you, Billy you why well, do <laughs> uh, you dabbed on it earlier though with the whole gender fluidity and how it's become so dramatically more mainstream mm-hmm. we have talked more about identity and fluidity and and what it means and being that that culture and how important that culture is we've talked about it more and more uh, not just us as a podcast but in reality. Uh, our our nation uh, globally, it's even being talked about more, uh, and and that's great, that's great. Um, I don't understand it. Let me let me go all the way through the thought. There 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 are parts of this conversation that have hit limits for me where I just don't understand it. Okay, and it's it's almost like a bridge too far for me. Like I can accept this, I can accept this, I can accept this, I can, but then there there's there's twists and turns within that I just. I can't wrap my brain around. I can't. But here's the here's the trick to it. This is the important part. It doesn't matter. My opinion and whether or not I understand it or don't understand it doesn't matter. I am going to do my best to respect your choice mm-hmm. to live the way you want. I don't have to understand it because it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't have you realize impact it on me whatsoever. Have an impact on your life. It doesn't whatsoever. have an impact. I want you. A person to be happy. And if you were born female and you want to be male, but you're not going to do the transitioning thing, but you're going to, you want to be called him, her or him and, and he, he and you want to you want to um, love a woman. Go for it. Be happy. You know, or if you are transitioning and you that's a serious step and you're going to mm-hmm. go through pain and process and expense to, to, to be the person you want to be. Go for it. Do it. I don't have to understand it it's not for me to live your life for you i respect your choice to do it i respect your choice to live the way you want to live so and i just it was a big moment for me to come to grips with that because there were times where i'd be like oh okay okay yeah great i I, you've had uh you've I've had you've been struggling with that for a while, just trying to. Well, because of the convention culture, you have we're exposed to it more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, you have people and and it it slapped me in the face almost I, literally in school system yeah so it slapped me in the face almost literally when i i saw this person who exhibited female features and i wanted to walk past that person and i said excuse me miss out of just being polite mm-hmm. and i did get the whole are you assuming my gender thing and it caught me off guard because one i thought that was kind of a cliche thing to say mm-hmm. but then i'm like um yes yes i did i assumed it because of your look and they got irritated with me, and they explained what they want. And I said, "Okay, cool, I understand. Thank you." And they They're just like what? Yeah, they wanted to be mad. They wanted because I, I, this person has to go through that battle so often. I'm assuming, right? Mm-hmm. But you explained it to me, and now I get it. But here's the here's the problem I'm going to have is I'm not going to be able to keep track of my scorecard where I. I can say, okay, this person is this, this person right. is that. I'm not going to be able to I'm walk gonna, through a crowd gonna... of 80 people and remember what every other person wants. There are going to be days I slip up. There are going to be days I get it wrong. And it's not out of any disrespect it's, no, or anything it's, like that. It's just a matter of... I'm not smart enough. <laughs> to keep track of everything. Yeah. So if if those who are in this culture are, are and exhibiting this uh, this facet of their life... Um, if they can be understanding of, of, of a lowly old curmudgeon, you know, curmudgeon in training such as myself, I will do my best to respect them, you know, and it's, it's just, just shouldn't matter what I think, but there are people out there who, oh, you all right over there? 
go, go get some go get some water. Oh, there's Billy's lungs grown for a run. Keep talking, I'm sorry. I right. promise I won't push any buttons. Well, <laughs> except for maybe Chris's. <laughs> <laughs> I won't push any buttons on the board. Hey, but, where was I? But you, you know, were talking the, about, and I've seen, but I've seen people who, um, this I have. There's a person on Facebook that I watch. They are transitioning uh, between two genders, and they're going through the whole process. And people are being s- tremendously supportive, and it's wonderful to see that outpouring. Mm-hmm. But I've seen a couple of their threads where there is a couple of particular people who pipe up and let them have it for it, and it's like, what? What's the point? What is the point of you doing that? Why are you... It, it's like Billy has said on a couple of occasions. He mentioned it earlier in this conversation. Blowing somebody else's light out doesn't make your light shine any brighter. Right. Why are you doing that to this person? <clears throat> Why are we attacking Haley Bailey? Why are we attacking Daisy Ridley? Why are we attacking J.J. Abrams? Why are we attacking, 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 viciously attacking? People attack because... They are insecure or they have their own personal mental health issues Mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. So it makes them feel better when someone else is being attacked because then they're not being attacked at that point. So the best the the best uh, defense Defense is a good good offense. And and, I mean, I see it on a daily basis. I miss your students. Uh, uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. I mean, just in a school population, you can see that there are kids that are so students that are so insecure mm-hmm. with how they are with their own feelings, even family members or even friends or even whatever. I, I can see things that they're not happy unless they're bitching about something or that they've attacked somebody and that you put them on the defensive because they've been on the defensive for so long. Does, so therefore, they're just going to turn around and. I mean, I'm sorry. At that shit point, rolls downhill. You need some therapy for that. Yeah. You you need to go talk to somebody about that mm-hmm. and about uh, and because it's just it's not healthy to one hold all those those feelings in in regards to it. But if you are concerned about A, B, and C, go talk to a therapist about it and say, mm-hmm. I don't understand. It, I don't like it or whatever. How can I? keep and how can i filter that's that's part of the thing is being able to filter those comments because people have comments left and right people have opinions they're just like assholes everyone's gonna have them Mm -hmm. but it's a matter of is your opinion going to hurt somebody and if it does why even say it Mm -hmm. at at that point and is it going to make a change that is it going to change the change the Make the change you want to make by saying probably not. No, I mean you know we're we've all seen just to stick to movies. We've all seen movies lately that were like mm, that wasn't that good. But I, like just, I just okay, I didn't yeah. like it. it you know, I thought it was a little formulaic. I thought it was a little bland. I thought the acting was a little cheap. The writing was a little bad. Great, you know, but leave it at that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the the thirteenth oh, yeah. Doctor Jodie Whittaker has been experiencing a huge backlash right. too. Because because it's not the classic doctor. She's yeah. the first female one. She's whatever. Mm-hmm. Get over yourselves. Seriously. People can regenerate into something else. We play D&D. We can get reincarnated into a, a blink bunny. Yeah. There you go, Scott. Scott. Uh, type thing. But you never know. I mean, but mm-hmm. people are sometimes so stuck yeah. in their perceptions of things that they can't see outside the box because they are so stuck in their mm-hmm. their likes and dislikes and they cannot handle change very well mm-hmm. and and they can't be flexible like a willow tree they they're they can't bend they mm-hmm. can't they can't see someone else's viewpoint because their viewpoint has to be right all, right. all the time yeah and and that makes it just more toxic mm-hmm. if you can't say you know what i don't agree with you but i see your perspective yeah type thing you don't have to you don't have to understand you don't have to you know, agree, just respect. That's all there is to it. But the part of the thing with the toxicity in nerd culture, going back to the Lady Ghostbusters thing, mm-hmm. there are people bashing it or like the new Lion King coming out or the new Little Mermaid. Mm-hmm. They're bashing it before they see it. Right. Or oh, Robert, Robert Pattinson, Pattinson, Pattinson is, is, Batman. is Batman. It's going to suck. How do you know? No, it, it, it probably people won't. Going, it might. <laughs> I, it might. But how do you it, it know could, now? And it could be it could be the George Lucas of writing. 
that yeah. the, you need the Carrie Fisher to come back in, change mm-hmm. change the writing. It it could be that the story's great, but the dialogue sucks. Yeah. Or the premise was good, but it wasn't strong in regards to like, like I thought the premise of Dark Phoenix was great. Oh, that comes from a, a it's a classic classic comic, comic book sto- uh, story right. arc. But people were so bent out of shape because it wasn't enough blow up action, blah 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 blah, because mm-hmm. it was more of a, a drama story mm-hmm. rather than anything else. But the thing, like, I've never been the biggest X Men fan. I've seen them all eventually, yeah. and I'll see this one mm-hmm. eventually. Right, same here. And I may or may not like it. I've liked some of the X Men, and I haven't liked some of them. Mm-hmm. But I don't go out of my way. I don't go up to the person that loves X Men Three: The Last Stand and go, "Your movie sucks." Yeah. We, to be honest with you, I don't remember which one that is. I probably <laughs> enjoyed it, but uh, I think it was blowing up the bridge in San Francisco. I don't know. Yeah. But you know, it there's too many other things to actually enjoy. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, I didn't like Dark Phoenix so much. Let me go watch Black Mirror. I right. I mean, yeah. you you liked Black Mirror. Mm. I've watched a couple episodes of it. Mm-hmm. I didn't like it, but I'm like, but I went back and watched a different episode, the one that was more like the Star Trek. Oh, one. the Star Trek uh, satire. Yeah. Sat- so yeah. therefore, mm-hmm. I'm like, I found something of it that I could connect to that I whatever, and say, so, you know what? Okay, I can give this another shot. Yeah, mm-hmm. type thing. It, yeah, it's a self-contained each episode. Right. It's a so, Twilight Zone esque type show. Yeah. So, but like, people were like so put out about the new Charm series. It. I loved the original Charmed. I'm kind of enjoying the new reboot of Charmed. It's set in um, Minnesota or mm-hmm. whatever instead of San Francisco. Right. And and um, there's definitely a, a tie-in to what what's happened. But... They're they're younger actors and actresses. They're they're not anybody that you really know. The the white lighter was from um, I can't remember what show, but Randy recognized him. But it's just something I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna check my brain at the door. Is it mm-hmm. something I'm gonna necessarily binge like Stranger Things? Probably mm-hmm. not. But it's like, hey, I, I'll I'll check it out yeah. and and things like that. I've kind yeah. of fallen off the the Arrow Flash bandwagon right now because i yeah, haven't been here. watching it so yep. there'll be something that i'll have to jump back on when they're on um netflix and i have uh not watched ncis since before christmas here's here's another one of my object examples i was on a fifth edition dungeons and dragons board and this one guy pops up and he's probably about my age overall mm-hmm. but for him D D was all about second edition all right, second edition, this second edition, second edition did this better, second edition did that better, this is better, this is better. Fifth edition does this, this is terrible, fifth edition does this, terrible. Just ripping fifth edition apart for, you know, a couple of paragraphs. And people get into the discussion, and he was just more and more vehement about it. And then somebody said the actual, you know, the convers- as far as I was concerned, it was the conversation ender. Who's forcing you to play fifth? It, this is the great thing about a, a, a tabletop game is... There's, there's nothing like in World of Warcraft. You are not able to play version one because you log into the servers. All the servers are currently on eight point whatever, mm-hmm. you know, nine point whatever. I don't even know what the patch is. At Allegedly, the WoW Classic going back will be is coming out, be soon. coming out soon, and you can go and see that. And I, and I plan on playing because that's where I started. That's where I learned. But the thing is, is as on a, on that MMO kind of a basis, you can't go back to where it started. Right. Okay. But in a tabletop book and paper you format. Can. Who's stop? Who's who's forcing you to play fifth? Who's forcing you? You know, if you like second edition, more power to you. It's a great game, mm-hmm. great system. I enjoyed it. I mm-hmm. remember that was what I cut my teeth on back in the first and second edition. Was, basic for me. Yeah, and and so you know you have that luxury of going back and bringing those books out and playing <laughs> that game. However, you know, there is one version that we won't open at our table. We won't talk about fourth. Yeah, that's yeah. the one that we won't. We're not talking about yeah. fourth. But I mean, I think. As we go back to those those purists, the mm-hmm. ones that have that played, say, second edition the longest time. I mean, I've played second edition and third edition longer than I've played fifth, and there's some nuances of fifth that mm-hmm. I don't know. And I think it's the unknown that gets people so riled up. It's amazing, and, and so I'm just like, it's insane. So like, you know, I'm running fifth edition on Sundays. So if I have a question or whatever. 
and I know Randy's not playing, or I'll I'll send, I'll put a little note, throw it across the table to him, because mm-hmm. he's just going to give me whatever that's not going to influence what whatever. Or I'll talk to you or Scott, mm-hmm. and knowing that Scott's just going to roll with whatever comes down the pipeline. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean it. It's is it I'm gonna I may I can bash a little bit about fifth edition only because I'm new to it. Right, but well, we all I, are that's right, and so it's just a little harder to understand and get past what we know. And I think that's part of the thing is getting past what get we past know. Get past what you know and, and op- be open, be open to, to, something, the, to something, something else. Is. And just because you don't agree with something doesn't make it wrong. It also doesn't make it horrible. And, and it's if you are getting such a visceral response to something, such a visceral negative response to something, then you need to change your friends. That you have to, you have to actually lash out and hurt people. Then you need to the, take a The problem is not with yourself. the is not the item. The problem is not with the item you're complaining about. The problem is probably internal. It's got to be you. I got to wonder because nothing should evoke that level, that level of anger. You're angry about something. You're angry about something, and I don't think take... it's J.J. Abrams' lens, lens flare. I really don't. Yeah. So there, there's something. So it's like, what's making you that toxic in the nerd culture? What's mm-hmm. making you do that? Yeah. Did it? Did it, it, it? Chances are, it offends your sensibilities, and so therefore, you're going to take it out on somebody else. And we'll listen. We're you not trained counsel. Up. We're not trained counselors, but we'll listen. Yeah. You know, talk to us about what bothers you about things. Talk to us about what I, what I is what you disagree people, with. People's points and things. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you think they only get mad at nerd culture type of stuff? No. no. Yeah. Listen, look at the look at the society we live in right now, where everything is an extreme. Yeah. You know, the people in the middle are quiet. It's the people at each end of the the spectrum. I'm pretty quiet. That uh, <laughs> that are loud and pointed and opinionated and cruel cruel to other people yeah i would that's the society say... we live in right now and we can point fingers at whoever we want to about how that you know but here's the thing is we can have one person we can all point a finger at but there's still all of the sheep that follow the shepherd that have made the choice to follow or to, to to rail against. So it, it starts small. It starts with people who are just like, take a breath. Okay, I don't agree. This is why. Or, hey, I really like this thing. And you bashing me is not going to make me change my mind. You know, so it's how does this how does this culture solve itself? We don't have an easy answer. We don't have an easy answer, and I, and I, I have a sneaking suspicion that it, this a level nerd of toxicity must not harm another nerd. Yeah, this level of toxicity, I think, is always <laughs> going to exist in a certain in certain arenas, in certain corners. But we have to kind of just take and, a moment and collectively take our breath and wonder why. And, and, and a lot of it, people don't think before they speak. No, they really don't. And, the the and internet put, gives you that wonderful shield of anonymity. And, right. Put yourself in their shoes, mm-hmm. and think if that was coming back at you and how you would feel yeah. when when something happens yeah. or if you get blasted by something. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Something to think about, people. Something and to think about. this is coming from someone that sits in the middle. Yeah. And I'm yeah. actually in the middle and I've got two extremists. I have a comic book and a Doctor Who fan. On oh, yeah, but we love each other. It's all good. I know. Yeah. <laughs> And I like Doctor Who, and he likes comic books. I do. Yeah. See, and, actually, and, and I don't really understand comic books. Can I tell you, I still haven't cracked open my two comic books from Free Comic Book Day. I, I, I read a bunch know, of... I don't know where I put them. I read a bunch over Well, then, Tanya, you're not a time. real fan. Yeah, you don't like stuff. Why'd you go see Spider-Man if you don't read Spider-Man comics? Come I, on. I like the, the, the background movie version of you it, didn't but even I don't know understand who Myst- the story. You, you didn't even know who Mysterio was, I You're bet. right, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. It's been around for decades, man. You're you're probably 100% accurate. He was one, of the, so he was one of the first, wasn't he? He was one of the first villains. Yeah, within the first like dozen issues, I yeah. think he showed up. So, oh. and Actually, can, so can I... So therefore, I went in with no... Expectations. Expectations or misconceptions yeah. about stuff. Go ahead, Billy. Uh, I, I'd like to close our, our 
our Toxicity. discussion <laughs> our discussion on negativity with something positive. Don't be negative I love the me. idea. I saw from one of my favorite nerds, and that's why I bring it up. Uh, since I follow, Ke- I am your favorite nerd. Yeah, besides you, you guys, oh. uh, <laughs> Kevin Smith. Oh, of course. A, I can't. The I can't, Smith. I yeah. can't uh, let the Smith with that. The, let the Smith speak. A, uh, well, a, a woman tweeted a couple days ago, just before like the day of one of his Q and A's that she was planning on, go, on going to. Can you believe I have to miss seeing at that Kevin Smith tomorrow? Because the man that's been harassing and threatening me for over a month will be there, and the police weren't able to do anything to make him stay away from me because it will be outside of the jurisdiction of the reports. So Kevin saw this and replied, or you can come as my guest, attend a pre-show shindig, and watch the Q&A from the safety of the wings. Oh. If that sounds good, let, and he gave his, at his assistant, uh-huh. no, and she'll hook you up. You won't get harassed or threatened if you're with me, although someone may tell us yoga hosers suck. <laughs> <laughs> The Smith, so, the Smith is good. The so Smith is wise. Kevin saw that tweet from awesome. his fan and took care of it. Yeah. And that made me feel good. That's see, and that's that's what we yeah. need is we need people just kind of step forward, just say, you know what, I'm gonna step past that. Mm-hmm. We can't you can't change everybody's mind. You can't change it. You can ask, you can beg, you can plead, you can say, Look, guys, come on. Is it really necessary to go there with it? Mm-hmm. You know? And I'm now I gotta tell you, I, I'm rooting for Haley Berry. Bailey. Haley Harry, Bailey, I'm uh, sorry, Halle I Berry, knew I was going to... Yes, we know. I'll root for Haley Berry, too, because, <laughs> damn, that's a good actress, and she's a beautiful woman. But yeah. Haley Bailey and her turn in Ariel... A storm or a... Yeah. <laughs> Haley, yeah woman. Haley Bailey as Ariel. Ariel. I'm yeah. looking forward to it now, more than ever, because I want to see the girl do well, and I know she will, mm-hmm. and I know it's going to be a good story, and I know it's mm-hmm. going to be fun, and people are like, well, why does Disney have... Disney hit a hit a, a stride and they're turning all of their classics into live action so they can revisit them from a different angle let them different do it perspective different perspective let them do it oh i saw something on facebook today about 80s and 90s kids 90s kids though like they're so uh-huh. happy that james earl jones is still alive because yeah. he will never you'll never hear mufasa you, you without... cannot replace that kind of a monumental voice no. no so i mean we, last week we talked about franchise fatigue and whatnot but this is different it's mm-hmm. a different take on on a, on on the classics, right. I, I don't see it as a sequel. I don't see it as a retread. I don't see it as a remake. A I see it take. as a different take. Well, it's like on a people classic. were bashing um, uh, the Aladdin and Will Smith mm-hmm. as. I thought Will was hilarious. I haven't seen it. Will was phenomenal. I haven't seen it, but <laughs> I mean, I'll wait for it to come out on um, mm-hmm. Netflix or you'll, whatever. You'll enjoy it. You will have fun Just with it because it, in my he doesn't opi- try to do Robin Williams. Right, but in my opinion, the, the genie is Robin Williams. Well, but yeah. I'm going to give it a shot when it comes out on Netflix Mm -hmm. type thing. But I know that people have seen it and say it's phenomenal. Yeah. The Smith is good. The Smith is wise. Positivity, people. You you know, you don't, like I said at the outset, and I've said it on several occasions, this conversation, I don't, I'm not going to force you to agree with me. I'm not going to force you to like things you don't like. You're entitled to your opinion. You're welcome to it. But, you know, know the boundaries. Don't hate something so much that you have to hurt somebody else's opinion or hurt somebody else's feelings to get your point across. You know, there's there's ways through. There are ways through. Together, we can have some fun. We can always find the common ground along the way. You can always find the common ground along the way. Or just don't involve me in your miserableness. Well, that's it, too. Keep it to your damn self. If 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 you can't see the way through, then keep it to your damn self. Yeah. So anyway, let's take a break and then we'll wrap this one up. Okay, Chris Hardwick on the Nerd Takeover. Are there nerds here tonight? Nerds! Yes! I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I mean, when I was growing up, there was nothing cool about being a nerd. You had to hide from people and you had to keep it inside. And now we can be out and proud about the nerdy things that we love. Like when I was in grade school, I was into like chess club, Latin club, the uh, D&D computer camp, like everything that made vaginas go away. I was way into it. <laughs> and that's no longer the case anymore, right? I mean, like nerds are powerful. Like pop culture is run by nerds. Like even the redneckiest of rednecks has a smartphone, a DVR, a DSLR camera, a laptop, a desktop. Nerds make the shiny things that distract the mouth breathers. Like, that is why we are powerful, right? Like, ladies, I will <laughs> you with my second place chess trophy. Oh, yeah. 
I have a first place chess trophy, but the second place has the bishop on top, and that is for you. <laughs> <laughs> I missed some of that. That's awesome. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So you still want to sign on? You want to love us? You want to support us some more? Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. I'll get into that in the out queue eventually. But you can also follow us on Patreon, www.patreon.com backslash FC3ROC. We have several levels that you can support us with. There's going to be James Irish's video game blog, some fictional pieces. Other folks are starting to step up and say, hey, we want to contribute to that blog as well. And that blog will always be free but behind the veil we've got some plans for what's going on behind the veil and uh so there is going to be some patreon only content coming up totally towards the end of the year uh so keep track of that if you want to sponsor us which we would wholeheartedly res- uh, respect and enjoy uh then you can we reach out you. we would love for you to do that uh and you can reach out to us at sponsors at fc3roc.org and uh, we have several levels that you can pick and choose from, although we also have the ability to customize. So get on board the monkey business train. Help us out here. Keep us pushing forward and advertising and getting the word out. And you know what an easy, easy way of supporting us is, is just share the signal, folks. Broadcast it out. If you're enjoying what we're doing and you're enjoying what we're saying, over 125 episodes now, feel free to share it with your friends. Point it out. We're on where all the cool podcasts are, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, The Works. We're all there. Spreaker, I think we're not on Spreaker anymore. Transistor. Transistor. Uh, and if there is a place where you get podcasts and you don't have us, let us know and we'll see about arranging something for you. Um, time for the, the question, question with, of the week. I got the question. You have the, You want to ask me the question? Yes, because I need other people's answers before I can think of well, something. Well, ask, ask Billy the question. Hey, Billy. Okay, yes, yes ma'am. What fictional character or characters would you love to see come out of retirement one last time, and what would you love to see them do? Well, I want to see them do what they've always done, which is fight crime. Mm-hmm. But the uh, characters are Green Hornet and Cato. Nice. Because they had an excellent radio show in the 40s, a pretty good TV show in the 60s. It was after Batman became popular, the same producer... William Dozier put out a Green Hornet TV show with Van Williams and Bruce Lee mm-hmm. as Green Hornet and Cato. Not a bad show. It didn't particularly fare really well because it was a little slower than it should have been. But uh, then they tried doing the movie with Seth Rogen. <laughs> uh, bunch yeah. of, what, a decade ago, maybe more? Well, not, and not that long ago, it, unfortunately. It was okay at best. Mm-hmm. It actually had some bright spots to it, but... <laughs> It wasn't very good, so I'd like to see him try again mm-hmm. with uh, Green Hornet and Cato. That works. Huh. You got any ideas over there now? No. Still no ideas? No. All right. Well, isn't it good that I have two or three? Yes. Okay. I might just take one of your ideas all or, right. or agree with you wholeheartedly. Well, I'm, all, I'm also, my, my, top, uh, my top answer is, is also a crime fighter from an old serial. From, he started on radio, uh, and he's the, he knows what. Evil lurks Ooh. in the Shadow? hearts of men. The yes, Shadow, uh, you know. Lamont as soon as Cranston. he said the, the uh, Cato and was it the Green Hornet? Green Hornet. Mm-hmm. Cato. I, I thought about the Shadow. Mm-hmm. So, Here's the thing: is way back in in the, the late seventies, early eighties, there were there was all these series of cassette tapes that were coming out with old radio broadcasts. Exactly. I used to borrow them from the library. Yeah, I That's had a ton I of them. I and, used to listen to Green Hornet and Superman and yeah, I had Evan Costello. Four, yeah, or, Evan yeah. Costello. I got Evan Costello. I had um, War of the Worlds. Yeah. Right? But I also had like four or five that were The Shadow. Okay. Right? And just listening to it, it was so cool. It Lamont just, Cranston. Oh, he was awesome. It, yeah. And then the, the Alec Baldwin movie came out in the 80s. And it, was, it didn't do it any yeah. justice. Yeah. It was, it didn't, but it was fun to it was see fun. it anyway. Yes. Yeah. It was fun to see it anyway. Check your brand at the door. And so just I would like to it. see somebody do a proper Shadow. Mm-hmm. You know, that would be cool. Now, my honorable... Who would play it? Who would play it? Um, Clooney. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, Clooney, I think, would be a good... I think he would be excellent at that Not one. a younger shadow, though. Not a younger shadow. Okay. Someone yeah. who's seen some shit. Yeah, exactly. Um, who would be a good... Maybe a younger actor would probably be like... John Krasinski. John Krasinski would definitely... That's definitely an excellent idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... But any anyway, my honorable mentions, I would like to see uh, Trapper John, Hawkeye Pierce, and Frank Burns 
having a reunion dinner. Uh, that would be like a 30-minute special of them in character, hmm. you know, several years after they were in Korea together, okay. all just, you know, talking about the things that they did. And then something happens, so they all have to be doctors again or something like that for a moment or two, you know, and, and, and they, they're just, they just fall right into the rhythm of being together again. Hmm. Um, you know, that was just a thought that popped in my head. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. You know? and, and last but not least, I would like to see um, President Jeb Bartlett back in action oh yeah because so i'd like i please. didn't I, i'd vote for him for real oh my god rescue us please rescue us jeb anyway i'd vote for bartlett for america baby I, i'd vote for either the people that were running when uh bartlett was was the uh lame duck yeah matt santos played by um uh jimmy smith jimmy smith and, and uh vinnick arthur vin or yeah arthur vinnick played by, by uh, uh, Alan, Alan Alda, the who was legendary. great, yeah. he was, am- and it was those are two great characters. Uh-huh. The live debate that they had—that's my favorite episode. That was a fantastic of, of episode. Last, yeah. It was amazing yeah. to watch the two of them in action, yeah. going at it. And like they a did a live. Debate. Do you remember yes. they did that as a live episode? Yes, they did. And I remember watching that. And then mm-hmm. I caught the the West Coast uh, the feed, right? So they mm-hmm. did a, they did it a second time for right. the California crowd, and it was almost. There were some subtle differences mm-hmm. in how they how they delivered certain aspects of what. So it was cool to see how they really did learn that character's platform mm-hmm. and then react to each other as the character instead of learning lines. Did I hear recently they were talking about doing a West Wing reboot? Not a reboot, but a reunion. They were talking oh, okay. about bringing some of the staffers together and and doing a, like a like a Murphy Brown kind of a moment type of thing. Which was short lived. Murphy Brown got canceled, didn't it? Quickly, yeah, it did. Like almost two episodes, two or three episodes in. It did not last Let's long. See, June 12, 2019. Rob Lowe ready for West Wing reboot and knows who should play president. Let's see what this says. Rob is, Lowe, it, is it a hopeful? I'm, I'm hoping they would do it or is it speaking, something? Speaking to BBC Radio 5 mm-hmm. in the UK, Lowe uh, t- uh, said about a potential sequel to the hit political drama. Of course, I'm in. I'm in my suit, ready to play Sam Seaborn. Uh, I can't tell if it's a real thing or just. Uh, I think somebody probably just asked him if, if they would do it if he was in. That's I think that's pretty much what that is. I don't think there's any actual plans to bring back West Wing at the oh, moment. Oh, that'd be that'd be it'd awesome if they be did. Spectacular. Except it'd spectacular. make us realize that well, the president would know that we didn't have planes in the Revolutionary yeah, War. Well, there's that. One if by lands, two if by sea, three if by Delta from LaGuardia. Yep. Delta shuttle. All right. Yep. Have we inspired you yet over there, young lady, or are you just going to pass on it this week? I just can't have think to of pass. it. I can't just, it's not something that. Firefly? No, I've thought about Firefly, but we were talking about. Deep like, Space Nine. You know. Bozo the Clown. Hopalong Cassidy. Captain Kangaroo. I, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Space Academy. Space Ghost. Uh, maybe um, the uh, Space Above and Beyond. Space Above and Beyond's a good one. Yeah. So that that was one that was short lived. Space 1999. Or even Andromeda. Andromeda, I, I, yeah. I, I like that in regards to just seeing what um, went Stargate. on. Stargate. Just to see the, the, the current, just to see everybody come up from like mm-hmm. Stargate SG 1 and. Uh, Oh, you know what? I would like to see where they would go with Stargate Universe because I thought that was actually fairly decent. A little slow. I never saw it. It was it was slow because it was more of drama than action, but I thought it had an interesting premise and the music was really good. Yeah, maybe I I know they've hinted a little bit about uh, Ziva coming out of retirement. She did pop up in NCIS. Or at least recently. it wasn't I don't know if uh uh Paolo Cato actually um, mm-hmm. came on, but it was hinted that... No, sh- sh- it happened. I missed that episode. I haven't seen it since it Christmas. It happened. Because I know there's, there's Emily a, Bishop... There's a cliffhanger where she shows up right before the closing credits in Gibbs's basement while he's working on a, his yet boat. another boat. Yeah. You know, and, and she's like, okay, Gibbs, I don't Damn have... Damn it, NCIS! Update Netflix! She goes, I don't have time to explain, but you're in danger. And he, he just kind of stares at her with his mouth hanging up, and then he goes, Zever, and then closing credits. <sighs> so it's happened. It's a thing. So I'd like to see where that goes to, yeah. And and I, I'd like to see Denozo back. I think well, I think they're going to string that one in at this point, just because you'd have to with mm-hmm. her being there. It would be almost a given. Um, unless she was um, not necessarily with Tony during that time. Well, I to, doubt she. To yeah. protect. She's been hiding. Yeah. 
So anyway, so you, my dear Netflix listener, share that. with us, share with <laughs> us what what character or characters, what crew, what team, what people, what person, what character would you like to see come out of retirement, and what would you like them to do? We look forward to your responses. Stephen Urkel. Stephen Urkel, with wearing normal pants. It turns out he did do that. He. <laughs> did I do that? Yes, yes, you did. <laughs> I did that. Oh. That's awesome. So I think we're good for the week. Carlton. Okay. We got it out of our system. Yes. Let me we're in good shape. You got to find the right buttons. Find, find the right button. And. Oops. Oops. I hope I didn't stop anything. We don't. No. Okay. I, I just had to make sure I didn't did stop the actually, music on the station. Did we actually record the whole thing? Yes, we did. Okay, okay good. I was afraid for a second I stopped the music on the station. Oh, but dear. I didn't. There's that there music, it is. <laughs> and this has been. Monkey Business, a product of the Mighty Monkey Corporation, purveyors and producers of the Flower City Comic Con, coming at you in mini format July 27th at the Green Street Center Movie Mall, Movie Theater Mall, Movie Theater Wing at the Mall. (laughs) See, you threw me off there. Stop talking. (laughs) Like us on Facebook, Ah, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, follow us wherever we go, and we will lead you to where the entertainment is. We're right in the middle of it. Yeah. (laughs) 